It's a great privilege to share with my Facebook friends and YouTube friends around the globe. Some of you occasionally email me, and I really want to thank you for that. We're in what's called lockdown. Here you are in my living room, where I'm accustomed to often working anyway. And of course, we know the living God is not on lockdown and is doing amazing things across the world, even in the midst of all this horrendous difficulty and suffering. I wanted to especially share this scripture that's always helped me when I was battling discouragement and I wasn't seeing the breakthroughs I was dreaming about. Things seem to be going wrong. Not that everything is going wrong right now. It's not that black and white. But these words from Habakkuk, maybe the Lord will minister to you. Though the fig tree were, were bear no fruit, though there's no grapes on the vines, the labor of the olive tree fail, the yields yield, the fields yield no food, though the sheep have no pasture, there's no oxen in the cribs, yet I will glory in the Lord. I will rejoice in God my Savior. The Lord God is my strength. He will direct my feet to the end. He will set me upon high places so to conquer by his song. May God bless you through his word, especially if you also are in lockdown and having extra time for Bible study. I was really challenged to do this uh, message this morning through reading uh, an issue from the Daily Telegraph just a few days ago about one of my heroes who I followed when he was in prison in Lebanon, Terry Waite. This is a clipping from our Daily Telegraph, and he is sharing about how to uh, actually enjoy your isolation experience. Of course, he was in a prison cell. He was undergoing some torture. I don't think he was allowed books. His one book that eventually came out, he did several after that, uh, was written in his head. Uh, we have our Bibles. We often have music. And many of us have internet, so really we don't have too much of an excuse. I especially was struck by his words that he dealt very strongly with any form of self-pity. And he thought about people that he knew of in other situations far worse than his. And he just thanked the Lord each day. He was there for a number of years. He, he lived one day at a time and thanked the Lord uh, for each day. But I was also challenged, as I thought of my friend Andrew Bronson, who was once one of my helpers right here in London on OM Special Projects, because his book, uh, God's Hostage, came out after he was in prison for a number of years there in Turkey. And when we think of what Andrew went through and Terry Waite and many others, it challenges us really to stay encouraged. By the way, if you're in North America, I just bought a, a lot of these at a special price. I'd be happy to send them as a gift, but you always have to send me an email, george.berwer at om.org. God's hostage, Andrew Bronson. We really are challenged by the global situation, and it's amazing here in Britain to see a quarter of a million people volunteer to help in the health services and other people are going the extra mile to volunteer and do everything they can, especially of course all the health workers, but many related to that industry are becoming our heroes. But for some of us, we've been in life and death ministry for decades. In OM and in special projects especially, we've been involved in saving people in connection with AIDS, in connection with impure water, in connection with malaria, um, so many different areas like the refugee work and the work among the extreme poor, the clinics we have in India. We've been rescuing people and helping people to stay alive for decades. And all of that continues. In fact, in this virus, the people who are going to suffer the most are those who don't have uh, often access even to water, to drink, sometimes even to wash their hands. 
that's been focused on the news lately, how the refugees and people in war zones are, are just so much more vulnerable. The whole situation is so much more complex. And of course, all of this is a challenge for us, disciples of Jesus, to do what we can. And we are still open here in our little special projects team, and we have unlimited opportunities to help people right across the world in all these life and death situations. But we have something even more powerful in that we are dealing with the greatest virus of all, the virus of sin. By the way, yesterday on the news, it talked about a virus of hatred that's spreading across the United States as people are abusing and bullying and even physically hurting people who are from Asia, blaming them uh, for the virus. How sad. But this is indicative of the lostness of humankind. And so, of course, our motivation is to see men and women come to a knowledge of Jesus. We really want to thank those of you who are helping us do that. One of the reasons we are able to do so much in all of these countries right now in terms of mobilization, new hospitals, medical care, is because, of course, the government, at least for now, has money. So often in God's work, in our efforts to reach people physically as well as spiritually, so often we are lacking funds because surveys have shown a very small percentage of Christians are really generous and most people only want to give to things in their own country. And we really need your prayers in OM, the ships, India, special projects to see the funds come in to be able to continue what's on our heart. I wanted to close by just referring to a list that I drew up the other day of 29 things that you can do in your own home. Just bear with me and maybe jot these down. You can sing hymns. You can study God's Word. You can send out, of course, email, WhatsApp, Skype, many ways to communicate. And our hearts go out to those who do not have internet access around the globe. These are the people that are our primary focus and we are having, of course, involvement with them around the world. Then I, my list goes on. You can listen to music. You can dance to all, do exercise dancing. It's one of my favorite things right here in this room, actually. In some cases, you can go for walks in the woods. We have that opportunity here. In some cases, you can go for drives in your car. You can pray. You can worship. You can get rid of clutter and do things you've been wanting to do for years. You can clean and tidy up the house, the garage, the garden. You can read books and articles. You can watch TV. Not everybody. Beware of too much news. That can really hinder you in more ways than you could think. Just constantly focusing on the virus. It's a great mistake. You can reread prayer letters. You can wash your car or your bicycle. You can review all kinds of photos. Uh, you can get more time on Facebook and YouTube. Stay away from pornography, that's important. Uh, you can also make different efforts to help find the funds for God's work. You can sort through clothing, prepare personalities when things change to be sent off to the charity shop. You can cut grass, work in your garden. You can do puzzles and play some games, Monopoly, crossroad puzzles. You can take a nap, that's my favorite thing. Get more sleep. You can cook, try some new recipes, give more attention to your pet, of course, if you have one. By the way, it seems that pets cannot get this virus. And that just reminds me, beware of fake news. Beware of getting news from just one source. Uh, that is really a serious situation we don't have time to go into. My list goes on. I'm sure you can draw up your own list. We'd love to hear from you during this time of uh, semi-isolation. We want to pray for you. And so remember my email, george.verwer at om.org. There is my special 